festivals fit into this overall landscape now of, of distribution and VOD and theatrical. Just because your movie is on the VOD platform does not mean anybody knows about it or is going to it or watching it. So it's like, although distribution may be easier than ever for filmmakers, it's also a matter of getting them to still go and click and watch your movie. How much money like people doing short films will spend like to, to make that, to make it into a film festival? You know, it's ridiculous. I see my friends with short films that are not going anywhere spending a lot, like almost the same they spend in producing it, and then if they don't get in, they get super frustrated for like one year, and then they cannot finance the next thing, you know? So film festivals shouldn't be the goal. You know, like you have self-distribution now, like, I mean, if you are doing, if you are doing, if you are doing um, short films. I actually really am interested in the Vimeo on demand model. If, if possible, to carve that out without it negating the other distribution plans. Um, it's very important to me that this film find an audience online. And I know there are, I mean, we've built up our audience because I've been working on this film for years. Um, we have almost 100,000 fans on Facebook. And I have like a mailing list and there's Twitter and you know, all the social media. Like there are a lot of mostly young women who are excited to see the film. And so I, it's important to me that wherever this film ends up online, it ends up in a way that these girls can see it. You still need to promote and to advertise to get people to watch your movie. That's why I said it's like, there's different reasons to make movies. So if you're making a movie to make a living, you kind of still do have to use traditional channels. You still have to get talent. You still have to have a great idea. You still need those agents and things like that. But if you're just making a movie because it's in your gut and you have a story to tell and you need to get it out of you, I recommend just going and making your movie and worry about the bullshit later. <laughs> I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to allow that stuff to be as fun as the proper filmmaking stuff. Trying to, trying to find, like trying to, trying to keep it a creative thing and trying to not, trying to not be so myopic to look at it as, look at it as the business side. It, should, it, it, it can be as creative as the on-set stuff. It's, part, it's, all, it's all part of the whole thing. I think in the indie landscape, if we can get to the point where filmmakers can kind of create their own body of work and be known for their own aesthetic visions and audience members can find their films online, it can become a sustainable model to keep making small films that aren't as cast-dependent. I feel like I like festivals that like are becoming more virtual, like you don't have to go, because that's like the goal, like, oh, it's all about, I got into this festival, and then are they paying for your flight? And it's like, oh, it's just so bull, like, bullshit, you know? Um, what do you want to be? Like, just want to be recognized. You, you can lose easily a year, a year and a half, just doing the festival circuit, and it feels great. It, it, it might encourage you and let you know that you're in the right track. But that's also part of the equation. If you are there already, like that will always come from there. Like, uh, like Malik didn't go to Cannes and, uh, for Tree of Life and everyone was asking him, well, where's, where's, everyone was asking Brad Pitt, where's Terrence Malik, where's Malik? And uh, his answer was, well, you know, Terry uh, likes to build the house, not deal with the real estate, which is one way to look at it. But I'm, I'm trying to find a way to, to frame this stuff as also building the house. I don't know if I figured it out yet, but it's, it's, it, it is a creative thing. It should be, it can be.